Well, hi and welcome to this video 7 of our series on graph theory and graphs and this is the last video that I'll be going through. It's on weighted graphs, networks and shortest path problems. So it might be a little bit longer, I'm not really sure yet. Um, there's a little bit more detail to it but again it's pretty simple and it's setting us up for later exercises, later work in graph theory. So a graph can be weighted, a weighted graph if there's an additional numerical piece of information on the edges. So for example it could be um, length, time, cost, distance for uh, as some examples. So here's a graph and we might have three, four towns, A, B, C and D, and they're separated by these distances on a road network. Um, or here's a graph, A, B, C, and there might be some cost associations. So this graph could be, um, or oh, here we go, here's an example, it could be a public transport type graph with the cost associated with that. These graphs are called weighted graphs. They're weighted graphs because each edge has got a weighting. Um, and then the graph is also often called a network. So just keep that in mind as well. The word graph and network is a little bit interchangeable, but does have a very specific meaning. You may be asked to find the shortest path or perhaps the cheapest route or um, something like that. So you might even be asked to find the cheapest trail here or the cheapest path. And if it's a traveler problem, um, so that Hamiltonian exercise, find the cheapest way, cheapest way for a door-to-door -door salesman to go from A to B to C and back home again. Um, and maybe without repeating an edge or something like that. Um, so there's some types of questions you might get. So let's have a look. This graph is a map of campsites with an estimation of the time required to travel each edge. Like a campsite A, B, C, D and E. Let's determine the quickest route from campsite A to C. So it's actually gonna build up. Now we can't go directly from A to C, but what we can do, and I'm gonna assume that the quickest route is um, to go, oh, I haven't actually got an, a value in here, which doesn't help. Let's make that four hours. Um, is to not do you know, too many edges. So if I go from campsite A to E, that's one option and that's four, or campsite A to B, that's five. Which tells me probably going to E is going to be the quickest. If I go down here, I get there in 10, going E to C. And that's good. Um, but it actually turns out if we go A, E, D, C, I get there in 9. So I've got, I've got to be a little bit careful here. Um, that's actually 9 now because this is 7 and then 9 um, following that path. To get to B, I get 5, 4, that also takes me in 9, so that works well. If I go B to D, I'm now up to 11, so that's not going to work. My shortest way to campsite C is 9 hours, and there's two ways of doing it. Determine the quickest route from A to C that passes through every campsite. This might be an important feature as well. Um, so again, this is a bit of trial and error, and these traveller problems, it's called, sometimes called um, the door-to-door -door salesman problem, is they're, all, they're quite hard. There's no actual way for us to mathematically do it yet, except to be reasonably clever, which we're doing with our markings here. Because we say the quickest way from A to E is four, and then we have to cover every um, direction. So I get four, D is now the next best. This edge seems to be not very nice. So I'm gonna try avoiding using that edge. I'll try and avoid using this edge as well. And I can see that I can go A to E to D to C to B, and back to A, and I avoid using this edge and this edge, which are our two longest edges. I've used every other edge, and I do have to use at least five edges. Um, so that's going to be the quickest way of doing it. Uh, and I probably should be writing down his answers. So the first one was nine hours. And the second one is four plus three plus two plus four plus five is 18 hours. Determine the quickest cycle from A. Well, that's 18 hours. And we're not talking about cyclers in riding a bike. We're talking about doing that, um, well, actually the quickest cycle. Well, a cycle is just a closed path. So we could go down here, but actually um, that's longer with that six hours. So we're better off doing this and this, um, and then this and this. And there's an equivalent answer. And that equivalent answer is to go around to here and then just go straight to campsite B and up to A because this is six hours and these two added together are six hours. So 18 hours is the answer here as well. 
Um, yeah, and there we have it. Here's a second example. The weights are distances in meters. So here's a fairly extensive graph. Determine the shortest route from P to U. So let's start by highlighting P and highlighting U, which is over here, and start talking about shortest distances. My shortest distance from P to Q is 20. P to R is 70. P to Z is 40. Z to R is 80, so 70 is still the best way to get to R. Z to Y is 70, and that's probably going to be the best way to get to Y. To X is 110, but if I do 70 up 40, that's still 110, so that's our best there. To S is probably going to be 150, but we'll check back on that later. And that's from R to S is 70 plus 80. X to W is 170, but I could go 70 plus 70, which is just 140. So that's our best way to get to W. Um, w to T is 190, or I could go 150 plus, one, plus 20. So it's going to be 170, that's better. Um, and that'll be going P, Q, R, S, T. V, 170 plus 50 is 220, 140 plus 40 is 180, so to V is 180, T is 170, to U is 220 from V, or 170 from T, plus another 30 is 200. So, P to Q to R to S to T to U is my best path from P to U, and the cheapest. Uh, from Z to V, the shortest distance from Z to V, and what is the distance? So I should put down 200 here. So where's Z and V? I'll do these in green. Where is Z and V? Z is there, and V is here. So same process again, um, this time in orange. So from Z to R is 40, and that's going to be the cheapest. I don't really care about P and Q, they're not really involved. To get to V... Um, Z to Y is possibly going to be part of the solution. Y to X is 70. R to X is 40, so it's better to go to X going up through Y. X to W makes this 130. And W to V makes this 170. But what if I go R? R to W is actually 40 plus 70 is 110. So 110 is better there, which means this is 150. What if I go R to S? That would give me 120 there. Plus 20 would give me 140 here, plus 50 would give me um, 190, which is not better than the 150 we've got. So the cheapest way is going to be Z to R to W to V. Um, and we've done it in the first case, we visited more edges than we needed, uh, more vertices than we probably needed to, to get to U from P, but we got all the nice cheap ones in. Whereas in the second one, it was actually better to go through even these expensive ones. It was better to have missed some of the other vertices. And so our answer is 150. So it's an example of a travelling problem, the travelling salesman problem. And it's quite hard. And it says here, discuss the strategies you've used. Well, I've just given you some strategies, so you probably haven't discussed them. So uh, that's the end of our video series. And hopefully you can use and apply weighted edges. Understand common context relevant to this concept and determine the shortest path from a weighted graph in a simple case using a little bit of design, a little bit of trial and error. Um, so there we have it, 10G, and hopefully you're also working on a chapter review. Thanks for watching the videos. Uh, feel free to pop me an email or have a chat to me on Teams. If you have any questions, all the best.